Okay, I've arrived in Mbeya safely and to kick off the tour of this amazing region here in the southern highlands of Tanzania, we'll be exploring Lake Ngozi. Now, Ngozi in, low, in the local language here of Nyakusa means the big one and we'll be seeing this amazing crater lake, the second largest here in Africa. guys got off the local Dala Dala and I've been told that the lake is around 4.3 kilometers um, walk from here so we're just gonna walk and when we find it we'll get some drone shots of the place and really get a vibe of this region here now Lake Nkosi is near um, a small village called Tikuyu here in the Rungwe region here in Mbea and it's really an amazing environment guys i mean just have a look at the, at the natural beauty of this place you know it's really beautiful now Mbeya might not be known for its high rising buildings and the glamours and glitz like you may find in the west but what it does have for sure is natural beauty and I'm really loving what I'm seeing I'm loving the environment like they say in Kiswahili Mazingira Yakupendeza Sana very beautiful environment here in Tanzania So, so far my experience in Mbeya has been positive. Um, people here are very um, friendly, welcoming, and I really like that when I travel to a place. So that's a good vibe. Now, when you talk about Mbeya, you have different people from different um, communities that live here. But some of the indigenous people, the natives of this region, you have the Safwa people and also the Nyakusa. And they're really known for their hosp hospitality, when I got off the bus in Sisimba, um, I purchased some oranges and then um, I ate it all and then the lady who I bought it from, she just came over to me and she just, g just g gave me some oranges again, you know, and you know, not for, she didn't charge me anything, she just out of the kindness of her heart just said, yeah, you know, have these, you know, it's really nice. So yeah, I kind of like that vibe when I travel to a place and what else can I say? In Bay at night, it gets cold. Like right now, it's winter here. So when it's summer in the West, it's winter in these parts of the world, right? And then when it's summer here, it will be winter in the Western Hemisphere. So yeah, it's really cold at night. That's the only thing. So if you if you do come here, please bear in mind you gotta wear something warm, come with a jacket, have a jumper or something, because it does get cold at night. So this is on the way to Lake Ngozi and I'm going to be telling you more about the lake and some of the local myths and beliefs in regards to how the lake was formed. So one of the unique features of the lake however in comparison to other crater lakes and lakes across the world this one it doesn't have the water doesn't fluctuate much at all and that's quite unique it doesn't go down or up and um, it's something that has um, confused scientists over the years so it's very unique feature of the lake very beautiful as well so we're gonna see that and this is on the way to Lake Ngozi all right and like I was saying Ngozi is a word from Kinyasuka and um, that's one of the local languages local communities around here their language is Kinyasuka and it means the big one and it is definitely a big lake because it's the second largest crater lake in Africa and sometimes people visit East Africa and miss coming and see some of these sites so you're getting an exclusive here on Inspire for Travel I mean just look at these 
lovely trees and the plantation different things are grown in this region after all Mbeya is the bread basket of um, Tanzania all watermelons rice bananas oranges tea different things are grown in this region here and it is uh, um, of course sent to all other different parts in Tanzania and even outside of Tanzania now we're not too far from Malawi and Zambia and these places so you do see a lot of um, various trucks that's with cargo passing through this region as well and I've met some of them in one of the hotels here in Mbeya you know they just they may spend a night or two and then they move on to where they're going some go are going as far as Congo and different places so really interesting here but guys just look at this amazing mountainous view here in Mbeya when you want to talk about natural beauty you gotta consider Mbeya region So we're still on the way and I've came across like a farm here and they have a lot of um, cows and you know here in Tanzania this is a very good business if you have a lot of cows for milk and different things like that so whoever owns this they're definitely in business and funny enough beef is a very important um, feature in the diet here in Tanzania you can get ugali and beef meat and you can also get rice and beef so it's something that's incorporated a lot in the people's diet here in Tanzania So a lot of people come here to get the um, cut down the trees and it's used for wood I guess firewood and different things like that in these parts you still find people still use the firewood for cooking and different things like that the other night I was at a restaurant right in Iringa though and it was cold and the lady had like a mini pot filled with hot firewood and she just put it by the side of me to keep me warm while I was eating because it was kind of like outside sitting where I was eating but it had like a gazebo to cover me but the wind was still cold so she brought that to keep me warm so this is all part of it here um, in Mbeya so they still cut down the trees for wood guys so I've been dropped off by the border border and um, 
I've tried, I have to climb a bit to see this lake, man. It's not easy to find, guys. I'm telling you, it's a bit far. Um, so, yeah, I gotta do it now. And let's see how long it's gonna be. We have a climb, we have a walk, but we gotta do it together, guys. So I'm gonna walk it now and then I'm gonna let you all know how it is once I get there. Peace out. Okay guys, I've made it to the top here in the forest and to go down it will ever take me another three to four hours guys. So this is the furthest I can get to the lake, but as you can see, that's it down there. <laughs> It took me around an hour and a half to get up here to the top where I can actually see the lake. Now you can go down further and that will take you another two to three hours I've been told. And due to certain time constraints, it's already late. I can't make the journey down so we could only see it from the top. Okay. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the lake. okay so um made it to the top i'm telling you honestly if you do come here come with a good pair of shoes and it does help if you do have a little bit of hiking experience because the terrain is it could be quite tedious man i tell you how to climb a bit jump down it, it, it's it's a real challenge so if you do have some hiking experience that would be really good now lake and go and see the lake you're seeing right now through those trees there many different um myths and legends behind so if we want to start off with the, the nyasuka that is the local tribal group in this region right according to them um there was a very bad ma magician that was chased out from his village by the name of lemwe and you know he practiced bad magic and stuff like that so he was banished then he came to this area here where we have lake ngonsi and apparently a lot of um, bad things started happening in the community. Cattles were dying and also people started disappearing as well. So the local um, shamans in the village got together and they did a ritual or whatever to bind this ma magician. And he was chained um, in the bottom of this lake here um, with some huge rock and, and or whatever. And after that <clears throat> a lot of the bad things that was happening in the community had stopped and this is how you you know the, the lake is is here today as well so this is one myth from the local community another thing is um there's another story that the german colonialists had buried a lot of treasure here and they did some spells to protect the treasure in the bottom of the lake so no one can access the treasure here and then there's another myth that there is a 12-headed um almost like a dragon that lives at the bottom of the lake so these are some of the local myths around here. It is interesting, um, according to scientists, that the water doesn't fluctuate, it doesn't go up or down. It usually stays the same as how it is, which is very interesting for a crater lake in comparison to other lakes across the world. Now, today, a lot of us, we come and we travel and we visit lakes. And of course, um, in modern way of thinking, you know, the environment is beautiful, but long time ago in ancient um, Africa, lakes were actually seen as um, prisons to bind certain um, beans and whatever has that was disrupting the community at the bottom of the lake. It was also seen as 
a, a place where you do certain rituals to communicate with other beings and stuff from other realms. So this was the thinking from a long ago. So in fact, you know, an ancient person watching this, we might say, wow, it's very beautiful, but they are watching it as a prison because they know certain things that is within the lake, okay? So very interesting. This is the local thinking around here, and this is Lake Ngozi. Now, if you do want to come here, like I said, be prepared for a challenge um, to hike. The terrain is, is not that straightforward, and I wouldn't advise people with certain um, disabilities to come here because it could be quite challenging. But if you're up for a challenge, then by all means, go for it. I'm going to walk a little bit here so you can see a bit more of the lake. And for your information, I know you're not really seeing the lake um in its entirety right now because i didn't go down that's another trek but if you do come here it's best to come here early i came here in the afternoon so it's quite late already and it'll be dark soon but if you come here in the morning they plan a day trip and you'll be able to go to the bottom and really get a good view of the lake okay so i'm just watching it from the top it's good enough for me and um, yeah, this is what you will see when you come here in Lake Ngonsi, the second largest crater lake in Africa. Another thing as well, guys, you know, a lot of people might say we always talk about the beauty of a place, but just be prepared to experience some cold weather when you come to this region, um, especially if you're coming in around now in June, July, August, early September. That's the winter period. So do dress appropriately, come with a jumper, a jacket at least. So when it does get cold, especially in the evening, you're prepared for that. So this is um the lake here and this is what you expect to see <laughs> 